In the last video of the series, we covered implementing a web API with minimal APIs. In this video, we're going to take a look at testing our web API using HTTP files. I'm going to head over to the HTTP file that I created earlier to test out our empty Hello World template and use it to send out requests to our running API. Now, the first thing I want to do is verify that everything in my application server just works. And to do that, I'm going to send a GET request to the to-dos endpoint in my application. This should send me back an empty list because I haven't done anything to create new items in my to-do list by sending a POST request to my API. Let's confirm this by running our application. Cool. Now that our application is running, we'll go ahead and send this request. Go ahead and update our port here. And hit Send Request. OK, I've gotten a response back. There's some things here that I expect to see. 200 OK, everything went well. And it's an empty list because I haven't created any items in my to-do list yet. So let's do that next and verify that our handler for processing post requests to the to-dos endpoint works correctly. So we'll go ahead and call that up. So there's a couple of things that are going on here. I'm sending a POST request to that to-dos endpoint. Remember earlier when we talked about standardized formats that clients and servers can use to communicate with each other? Well, here's our first indication of that. In line six, I'm defining the content type of the request. The content type is a way that my client can communicate to the server what data format is used when representing the payload in the body of the response. Here, I'm saying it's going to be a JSON-based payload. And I'm sending that exact payload using JSON, which uses these keys and values to represent the properties of my to-do. We talked about them earlier when we defined our to-do type. We've got ID, name, due date, and is completed. The properties in this JSON object will map to the properties in my to-do type when I send this request. So let's go ahead and do that. Send request. OK. Things are looking good. I can see that I received a 201 um, created response. And the payload consists of the exact same information that I sent, which is the properties related to my particular to-do. Now, if I go ahead and send requests again to the get to-dos, I will receive a list of all the to-dos, which should hopefully include the one that I just created. Yep, and there it is. You'll notice it was a little bit of a subtle change. My to-do has been now been enclosed in these brackets, which represent the list of all to-dos. Just to confirm the behavior here, let's go ahead and add another to-do. We'll give this one ID2. We'll say write another demo. And we'll send the request over. There we go. We got our response. It's a different to-do. It's got a different ID. And if we retrieve the list of items again, we'll see that we've got a to-do with ID1 and a to-do with ID2. Great. So it looks like our post and get all to-dos endpoints are working. Let's try a few more endpoints just to make sure that everything's working correctly. Now, one of the other things that we added was a handler that allowed us to resolve items by their ID. So let's go ahead and test it out and see if we can resolve the second to-do that we added by sending a GET request to it. So I've copied over the same request that I used earlier. But key distinguishing factor, I'm going to go ahead and add forward slash 2, where 2 is going to be that route parameter that gets mapped to the ID that we use to find a to do with the ID number 2 in our list. If we send a request here, what I expect to see is a single item returned, not a list. And I expect it to be the item with to do or, and I expect it to be the item with ID2. There you go. That is exactly what we expect. We've got 200 status code, and we've got the payload that we want to see. The last thing we want to try out is our delete. We added some logic to be able to delete to do's by ID, and we'll go ahead and send a request to that now. We'll just go ahead and copy our get by ID. And go ahead and just replace get with delete and send that request. Cool, OK, so I see the response that I expect to see. 204, no content. It looks like it deleted it successfully. To double check this, though, 
I'm going to send a request to my get all to do's route. And what I expect to see is a single element in my list. And there it is. There's just one to do with ID one, which is not the one that we deleted earlier. In this video of the series, we validated the implementation of the web API that we built for managing items in a to do list. In the next video in this series, we'll start taking a look at some of the other features in ASP.NET Core that make building web APIs a super robust experience. <laughs>